The Mixed Mornings and More podcast with Steph and Sean. Now available daily. Good morning, world. Hello, hello, and welcome to Monday, July 10th. I've been talking about my very full email for about a year now. Gmail says I'm allowed 15 gigs of storage, and I'm using 15.4, and they want me to pay for that extra 0.4 gig of storage to the tune of another subscription that I won't even notice coming off my credit card. And my email always says, soon you won't be able to send or receive email if you don't upgrade your storage. And I always think that's an empty threat. Well, it happened over the weekend. With no warning, I was waiting on an email and discovered that I hadn't received any since Thursday. Three whole days, Gmail was withholding my precious emails. All my promo emails from Old Navy and clearly contacts that I never opened just didn't arrive. Neither did the fake savings from WestJet or the one about the sale that Crocs is always having. Nothing! I still didn't pay them, but I have spent the last half hour painstakingly clicking delete over and over. How many emails is 0.4 of a gig, and is there a faster way to do this? I got to hang out at Fort Mac Motorsports over the weekend, and they had a lot going on. There was stuff for the kids, a barbecue, and then there were these stunt guys. Now, I'm probably going to say all the wrong words here, but they were on their motorcycles and they were showing us some tricks. <laughs> I was videoing it and in every clip you can hear my gasp as these gents leave the ground and sail through the air while barely hanging on to their bikes. One of them even did a flip, like his entire motorcycle did a somersault while he was on it. It was terrifying just to be a spectator. And it got me wondering, how old do you have to be when you start doing that? to not be afraid you're going to break your neck or your limbs beyond repair or completely trash your most prized possession in a motorcycle. Like, I don't think I've ever been fearless enough to think that I should catapult off a ramp on a very powerful hunk of metal. But when does the fear kick in for most people? Or is it just a personality trait? Some people have it and some people don't. I'm racking my brain to think of the most dangerous thing I've ever had the adrenaline enough to do. And I mean, going for a walk in the dark is pretty scary. That counts, right? I started flipping through the newest edition of Cottage Life magazine this weekend. The whole thing centers around summer activities. How to keep your kids in love with the lake. Try these lawn games and tips for what to bring if you get invited to someone's cottage. And then, there amongst the beautiful pictures of summer fun was an ad. With snow! Yes, I said the S word. And ski boots! <laughs> and the tagline was, only six months till the snow flies. Uh, excuse me, but what country are you living in that the snow is going to wait six months to fly? It's July. Optimistically, we have four months left without snow. Very optimistically. Must you remind us? This ad served to remind me to enjoy summer while I can. That the daylight is long, but the weekends are short. That air conditioning is nice, but so is sitting outside when the air doesn't hurt your face. Soak it up, everyone. As the ad said, only six, <clears throat> five, uh, four months till the snow flies. Have you heard about this? A parliamentary committee has recommended that the federal government remove best before labels in an effort to reduce food waste in Canadian households. And I totally get it because I am a little bit of a best before fear mongering person. I know that there is the expiry date and there's the best buy date. And they're like, this product is going to be great until then. And then after that, you'll have to decide for yourself if the chips are stale or if the crackers taste a little bit cardboardy. But I get so nervous about things like lunch meat or like pickles and things like that. I'm like, what happens if I bite into it and it's bad and I can never eat lunch meat again because I can't wrap my head around that one taste that happened that one time. But there are some things that I'm okay with going past the best before date, like salad dressing. I feel like craft salad dressing goes on sale and I think I need to stock up on it. And so I buy a bunch of ranches because I make a lot of buffalo chicken dip to take to places. And then if the best buy date has passed and it's the next one in the cupboard to come out when I'm making buffalo chicken dip, yeah, that's the one that's going into the dip. And it tastes fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Do you have something that you're like, that best before date, that's just a suggestion and I'm totally ignoring it. What is it? Would you pay someone to follow you on social media? How much? Someone just paid Jody Sweden, aka Stephanie Tanner from Full House, $700 to follow them on Instagram. She doesn't have to do anything, no liking required, 
but she has to stay a follower for at least a year. I mean, if Jody doesn't interact with the account, she'll never see any of the person's content anyway. It seems like a strange waste of $700 to me. But not just that, it's a strange thing for Jody to accept money for. Like, what's $700 in her pocket for pressing a follow button? And by the way, my name is Stephanie, too. Can we convince that person to pay me for a follow? Want more of today's show? Download the Mixed Mornings and More podcast. Now available every weekday.